Hey, John here. I saw this on eBay the other day and I just had to have it. I got this idea. I want to hack this and use it for something on my desk. I think it'll be really cool. I can't wait <laughs> to see what, what condition it's in and kind of decide what I want to do here. Big thanks to all my patrons, as always, and subscribers and likers of these videos. Keep my mind going on this stuff. Oh, this would be cool to record, you know, that kind of thing. Thanks for supporting the channel. So here it is. It is a new in the box, allegedly, item from the, I don't know, 60s or the 70s from... Western Electric. Anyone of a certain age that grew up in this country, especially if you're male, <laughs> knows where this was. <laughs> Charlie's Angels. This is the speaker that Mr. Townsend used. Now, this was supposed to be new <laughs> in the box. I don't know how new that is. Um, the box looks very, it's a little scratchy. Mm. Good enough, certainly good enough. It was pretty cheap uh, for the uh, relative to the other ones. It looks like there's some spots on there. I should be recording this. <laughs> I don't know how well that shows up. Yeah, you can sort of see these spots in here. Somebody spattered paint on here. New in the box, my left, uh, you know what? So this is a Western Electric 108 AA. I'll bet 777 was the manufacturing date. A 108 loudspeaker set. So, okay, so <clears throat> I feel much less, you know, concerned about, you know, the sacrilege of destroying this, given that this is cut up here, and it's not brand new. I guess this is, I mean, uh, this is not the original packaging. I mean, it could be the, uh, hmm. It does say on here, I don't know how well it comes, let me pick this up here. It says 108AA3 loudspeaker quantity one. So, I mean, this is probably a box. Somebody obviously dorked with it. Get some better audio here when I'm up on the other screen here. Well, fine. It's got a couple of scratches and dents. I can clean up the paint, I guess. Let's open it up and see what's inside. All right, so normally this particular device, and the reason they probably don't charge a ton of money for these, I think I got this for $49 or something like that. Their prices are all over the place, but this particular one really leapt out saying, you know, half the price of the other ones. Now, these are going to be hard to use for what they're originally designed for. You'd be much better off buying one of those Radio Shack speaker phones um, as you can see, there's an awful lot in here. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. A PC board with a bend in it. A, kind of a ribbon thingy that they folded over on there. A rubber gasket for the front. And a wire that goes in. All right. So there's a lot more in here than a speaker. Okay. The way this thing would have been used. Look at all the wires in there. A whole bunch of them. At least a dozen wires there. Um, what this would have been plugged into is something called a KSU, which I've always called a key service unit or a key system unit, um, which is the device in an office PBX, which stands for private branch exchange, if you don't know what that is. Um, those phones that have the little clicky push buttons on them and the hold on the end and they light up and all that, those phones are run by a system that you'd buy and you know, put in your back office called a key system, key service unit. And um, that's what this would have plugged into. And that's why you can't just buy one of these. Even if you have a landline, this is not going to work. If this was brand new in the box and perfectly mint condition, which I can assure you this is not, um, I would feel bad about what I'm about to do. And that is to remove all this and take the speaker and uh, kind of scrap the rest of it. And then I'm going to modify 
I'm going to build some innards that replicate a um, an intercom speaker that's in my house. And I'll show you how that works in another video. And what I want to do is make this one of the intercom stations and put it on my desk. Because I just think that would be the cat's meow to have the, uh, you know, the good old-fashioned 70s era speakerphone box sitting on my desk. When my sweetie calls me in for dinner, <laughs> it'll come out of this. Uh, and, of course, to do that, I have to, you know, basically, I don't need to destroy it, but I'm going to need to gut this thing and replace its innards. Yeah, I could always put it back again if I really wanted to, but I'm nah, nah, I'm not going to. I'm going to just hack this thing. There's a ton of them available. It's not like these are super rare or anything. So please don't uh, don't kill me <laughs> in the comments for the sacrilege of destroying such a wonderful bit of history. This was a thing, right? Definitely was cool. And it had uh, the, the control for it was this like pedestal thing that had a rocker switch on it with a microphone was actually in this pedestal thing. And you hit on and off and, and it, 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 it had some class, you know, very much of a James Bond sort of thing, right? Which is probably why they liked it in the Charlie Charlie's Angels stuff or prompt to get, uh, what was his name? Townsend, the Townsend Corporation. Charlie Townsend, get his voice <laughs> to, to do some uh, simple playbacks on this thing, I guess. Get the actor to... So, you know, nowadays you can like hire certain actors to do your like uh, telephone greeting messages and stuff. <laughs> Maybe I can get that guy to do uh, uh, a greeting for my YouTube channel or something. All right, so I took out random screws, and it's not coming apart. Ah, uh, there's more. But wait, there's more. All right, here we go. That's great. Terminal designations. There are terminals. 29, 30. These are not numbered at all. There's a wire on that one. Hmm. Okay. Maybe they expect you to draw on them. I don't know. You can see some chips, integrated circuit type sockets in there. I can't really see much. Maybe this is going to kind of open up. Yeah, maybe the board will kind of pop open. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I don't know why this is so exciting to me. <laughs> but it is. It's going to be cool. All right. There we go. Well, there's one board out. Wow. Wow. What? <laughs> Custom Western Electric Chips. A week oh oh four seven seven. That I'll bet those are dates. Five seven seven three seven seven. Yeah. And this must have a bunch of capacitors in it or something. Wow. Just look at the size of these things. A diode and some transistors. Jeez. Wow. Just look at all the crud in there. And the transformer hitting the speaker. I'll use the speaker. The rest of the stuff, I have no uh, expectations that I would use it. So these, obviously, are holding the back on. I worked for what was Western Electric for a little while in the late 80s, right at the end of their, you know, their divestiture transition. And, um, I mean, I've been to the teletype building in Skokie when it was still the teletype corporation, and talk to people that work there to get stuff that we needed. My job during divestiture was to transfer from Bell Labs to what was, uh, they renamed Western Electric to Network Systems. And uh, I worked in the manufacturing side of things, which is what Western Electric was. That's why everything says Western Electric on it when, you know, get old phone equipment. And... Um, and the, the reason we were, uh, my job was to transfer technology from Bell Labs to network systems because they did not know if the two entities would stay together or not during and after the, uh, the, the when the divestiture uh, ended. So 
Um, I spent a lot of time meeting with Bell Labs guys and getting computers and all that other fun stuff. And um, Teletype Corp was one of the groups that was also in Western Electric, I think. I spent a lot of time ugh, tr literally getting, getting hardware moved and all that other fun stuff. So I met a lot of people and uh, saw all the factories and stuff. And then, of course, after divestiture, <laughs> nothing mattered because the two entities did stay together. And it took a long time, and I they ended up going and selling the whole thing to Nokia. And then Lucent Technologies, I don't even know who owns them anymore. It's, it's totally a whole nother ball game. And what was AT&T? I have no idea what they do now either. They bought... Um, Direct TV and uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's not. I don't think it's even related to what the, the original company was anymore. They still deal with some phones, I guess, but that's about it. There's a box in my backyard in this house that says AT and T cable. Uh, for there uh, uh, wires in my backyard or something, but that's about all I remember. So this is perfect. I got a speaker and I got a cool box that I'm gonna use. As a PA thing. So, yeah, okay, and back to the sacrilege at hand here. Um, so, in order for this to work, when we take a look at the PA system, I'll take one of my stations apart and see what's inside it. Because I've seen it, I took one of them apart a while ago. I looked inside there. There's like hardly any parts in it. So, this will be real easy to build one of those and hook it up to the speaker. I think the speaker was 25 ohms in that thing. I don't know how many ohms is this. Is. I, 25, 8, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll slap it together and do an experiment and see what gives. And then I can wire this thing into the house system. This is going to be cool. Um, when that happens, I'm looking at here, is I'm going to need two buttons. A press to talk and then a release button. So what I'm thinking is I could put two buttons on the back of this so that when, you know, is when I want to make announcements. Somebody take out the garbage. <laughs> Bring me a sandwich. <laughs> Don't let my sweetie hear that. I'm uh, <laughs> just saying. Um, uh, yeah, so I need to be able to hit those buttons in order to um, answer questions. You know, come to dinner right now, but wait, I'm recording for YouTube. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm going to have to drill holes in here. I don't feel too good about that. But as I look at it, I can see scratchy wetchies. You can see, uh, let me see if I can get the right kind of glare there to see those. I don't know how well that shows there. The light in the ceiling, I can see these a couple of scratches there. A scuff here. You know, yeah, I mean, I could probably buff this, polish it out if I wanted to. But I think, that, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it up. <laughs> And put two switches, because that's 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 a natural, you know, if I put my hand here, click, 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 that will work. And I have some buttons lying around that might work. I saw these on, these I saw on, uh, these are probably an Amazon purchase. High quality imported from China. I bought these because <laughs> there'll be another YouTube video. There's um, the lighting system in this house that I bought is also <laughs> retro cool. Uh, it's got all these remote control buttons that have a bunch of solenoids and stuff to control the lighting. And the switches are $50 a piece if you want to buy replacements. But they're really just um, a single pole, double throw, momentary contact, which you could easily you know do with two push buttons like this. And um, what I was going to do is make some like control panel plates, hopefully that will look cool, and put in my garage and take the switches out of the garage so I have spares because they are like really old plastic and they're kind of coming apart. But anyway, so I got a bunch of these and these might work if I mount them in the back like that. Um, although press, I don't know, maybe I'll get one that sticks out a little more. These you have to press in a little bit. But whatever, they're here. I thought I'd get some of those and try them out. They're really cheap on Amazon. I can talk about those. I'll put links to that. If you want to check those out on Amazon for yourself, I think this is going to be a cool project. 
All right. So tune in next time. I will tear apart one of my the uh, intercom stations and we'll look at the circuitry inside there and reverse engineer how it works and all that other fun stuff throw together a quick prototype maybe on a breadboard hook up this speaker and see if we can make this uh work as one of the stations in the house I, this is just gonna be really cool oop i also need a volume control whatever I'll, I'll drill three holes back hey, whatever all right so thanks for watching new project let's see how this goes i it'll come together quickly or it'll be a complete failure i don't know but i've got high degree of faith that this will this will be pretty cool this will come together uh pretty quick Woohoo! charlie townsend here <laughs>